Hey, it's time for another movie review. This time around, I'm going to be reviewing the first part of Chanwook Park's Vengeance Trilogy. Now, some of you may remember my Old Boy review from a few months ago. Well, Old Boy is actually the second part in the trilogy. Although there is nothing wrong with watching Old Boy first, because none of these movies are connected in story or plot. Just like John Carpenter's Apocalypse Trilogy, which begins with The Thing, you don't actually have to watch anything else. You can watch them all as standalone movies. Which is good, because I don't like this one nearly as much as Old Boy. Now, this is another South Korean revenge movie, so you'll have to j just have to roll with it. I don't like Old Boy. This one is not dubbed, so you're going to have to read some subtitles. Yeah, I know it sucks, especially when all you want to do is kick back on the couch, drink a few beers or Mountain Dew if that's your persuasion, or you're not old enough, and just enjoy a hassle-free flick. But trust me, even if it were dubbed, it wouldn't be hassle-free. It's the kind of movie that makes you think. Even more than Old Boy, it really poses some complex problems to the viewer. So I'll get into that a little later. So for now, let's talk about the plot. The movie begins with a letter from a guy who has an ill sister, where he explains that he is deaf and dumb. He can completely process anything that he hears, but he cannot speak. He is essentially mute. It has this nice way of subtitling all his thoughts, so the character isn't a moron he can't think. He just can't speak. The letter also explains that he plans to donate his kidney to her. Unfortunately, their blood types do not match, so he cannot donate his kidney. And since he doesn't have the money to keep her in the hospital, he has to take her home. Unfortunately, immediately after, he gets fired from his job and has no way to even support himself and his sister. So he decides to sell one of his own spare kidneys on the black market in exchange for one for her for a 10 million won fee. I have no idea what the exchange rate is, but I imagine that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 grand, because I really can't see them doing it for much less than 10 grand, at least in the States. Unfortunately, he gets royally screwed over and they take both his money and his kidney and leave him there naked to fend for himself. And three weeks later, the hospital finds a suitable do donor kidney, but he no longer has the money to pay for the operation. If that isn't a kick in the balls, I don't know what is. So he's only got a week to come up with 10 million won. His crazy anarchist girlfriend comes up with the brilliant idea to kidnap someone's daughter for ransom money. She rationalizes it to, to him to the point where you almost want to reach through the screen and slap the bitch in the face. Unfortunately, if you're afflicted with my condition, you never would, because she's really cute. And this is where we meet Mr. Park, the father of the kidnapped little girl and president of a small electronics company that's hitting some hard times. He had to fire the other guy because he didn't have the money to pay him. The other guys had seniority. And it's his daughter they decided to kidnap. Although it's possibly the most humane kidnapping in history. They play with her and treat her like a little sister. He even lies to his sister so she doesn't know the little girl has been kidnapped. The girl doesn't even know she's been kidnapped. There is one pretty funny scene where he has to make her cry and take a Polaroid of her without his sister realizing what he's doing. But she keeps running away and he has to keep chasing her with a camera. Unfortunately, after Mr. Park pays the money, his sister finds his papers from him being fired and does the math and figures out the girl has been kidnapped. After Ryu comes home with the money to save her, he finds her in the, bath her in the bathroom dead in the bathtub with, her, with slit wrists. The look on his face is one of the most raw pieces of acting I've ever seen. But, you know, it's Korean so I can't really judge. So he takes his sister to the stream where they played his children, where she asked to be buried, along with the little girl. While he's burying her, the little girl falls in the stream, and because he can't hear her cries for help, she drowns. Mr. Park is called when, the, when they find her body, and he vows to kill anyone that had anything to do with the death of his little girl. So now they've both got people to find and scores to settle. I would have liked not, not to have ruined the first hour of the movie, but unfortunately, that is about the length of the first act. Normally, I go through the first act and leave the rest up to you guys to watch. The first act is a setup and takes about 55 minutes. And the second act focuses on Mr. Park putting things together. And the third act is both characters enacting their revenge. But it doesn't really switch gears until the third act, and that's when the movie gets heavy. I mean, other than heavily depressing. At this point, both of their lust for revenge push the, this movie way over the edge. Now, as stated before, this is a revenge movie. But it's a revenge movie unlike any other I have ever seen. You see, both Ryu, the, the 
guy I was talking about before, the kidnapper, and Mr. Park are both antagonists and protagonists. They're both the good guy and bad guy. They're both stuck in this gray area where you can really choose who to root for or not. Hell, you probably shouldn't even pick a side. It's also a movie about class. Primary, socially, social, and economic class. Frog is a poorer man who works two jobs in a factory and takes care of his ill sister and he, and he can't afford it. And he'll do anything to help her, whether it be working two shifts or selling his own kidney in the black market. And Mr. Park has his daughter killed, taking the only thing he cared about in his life away from him. Albeit accidentally, and he decides to kill everyone responsible. I can't really look at either of them as the bad guy or good guy. So you really can't blame either one of them. Although the links they are willing to go to for revenge are reprehensible, disgusting, and vile. I mean, the things they do, they do to other people are just violent and unsettling. Actually, I choose to make Ryu's girlfriend the villain. The malcontent that came up with the whole idea to kidnap the little girl for ransom money. She didn't even research her target. I mean, she kidnapped a failing businessman's daughter. And it all turns out for nothing anyway. I mean, they get the money, but the sister dies. She obviously doesn't know her friends. Now, this movie isn't for the faint of heart. Nor people who are easily offended at sexual imagery. Masturbation, sex, electrocution, beatings, heroin use, and even corpse fucking are all par for the course in this flick. Yeah, you heard me right. Corpse fucking. In fact, there's one beating near the end that was not a stuntman. It was actually a real honest-to-God ass whooping. Because they had no budget for special effects. They actually had to beat the shit out of a guy. Talk about having to get it in one take. The director actually took the mangled guy out to dinner to apologize, but I can't really imagine the egg rolls or dumpling tasting too good with all that blood in his mouth, no matter how good the restaurant was. And just wait for Ryu's five iron frenzy with a metal baseball bat. It's the kind of thing that would make the Joker cringe. It's a really disturbing film, but I like that. Oh, um, sorry. But I honestly like movies that challenge my sense of self, decency, and morality. Now, believe it or not, in this movie, there's absolutely no music to speak of. None whatsoever. At least not when it's focusing on Ryu, which is 75% of the time. I think because he's deaf and they want you to be in both characters' shoes, it's very stark and almost gives you time to think. Although it does make it more than a little hard to watch. With hardly any music to spice things up, it doesn't get boring exactly, just exhausting. It kind of makes the movie drag a little bit in the beginning. The thing is about this movie is you have to stick around for the third act because the third act is the big payoff. It's what everything was building towards in the first two acts more than most movies you see. Because most movies with the first two acts, you know, you get some action, but not really. But the third act, the last half hour to 40 minutes of the film, are the big payoff. That's what you're looking for in this film. You gotta stay till the end. If you don't stay till the end, you're gonna think it's a piece of garbage. Although some of the cine cinematography and shots are very interesting, I can't help but feel that it's nowhere near as good as old boys cinematography. There is this really nice scene where they both, where they keep switching between Ryu and Park, and they have basically the same conversation. In fact, I still have no idea which one is actually Mr. Vengeance. There is this one scene at the at the end where they finally face each other that is so emotionally charged you almost lose your breath. So in the end, I'm going to have to give this two different scores, as I call them, the schmo scores and the fan scores. The regular Joe public types are going to want to give this a pass. For you guys, it's maybe a 4 out of 10, maybe even a 3, if you just kind of like movies and, you know, you're like Die Hard and Fast and Furious and you know, you don't watch Shawshank or any of those more deeper movies. But for my people, yes I have people, the Asian film and anime fans or revenge film guys like myself and the film buffs, I'm gonna have to give it a six and a half to seven out of ten. Just make sure you've got a strong stomach. I wouldn't recommend that anyone buy it unless you want the full trilogy because I doubt you'll watch it more than once. It's a definite rental or Netflix though it's the kind of movie you'll watch once, think about it for a few days, and appreciate it for what it is, but you'll probably never watch it again. In fact, I wouldn't have watched it again if not for this review. It's just a hard movie to sit down and watch for various reasons. 
Maybe if it had some more music or they cut it down some, especially in the first act, it would score higher. But as it is, I can't give it a buy. It's just not buy material. So, I've gone on for way too long now, and I'm sure you're sick of listening to me prattle on. So, till next time, have a nice fucking day.